Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here today I'm doing my full review on the all-new MSI GP70 17.3 inch gaming laptop all right let's get started for late 2014 MSI introduces the GP70 which is a budget 17.3 inch gaming laptop that costs under $900 US MSI is aiming this laptop towards the casual gamer that wants to play many of today's games on low to medium settings without breaking the bank all right, let me go and break down the specs. This laptop features an Intel Core i5-4210H, which is a fast dual core processor clocked at 2.9 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM, expandable to 16 gigabytes, a 17.3 inch LCD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, a one terabyte hard drive running at 5400 RPM. For the graphics card, we have an Nvidia GeForce GT 840M with two gigabytes of DDR3 video memory, for wireless connectivity, we have an Intel Dual Band Wireless AC3160 with Bluetooth 4.0. For the Ethernet port, we have a killer Qualcomm E2200. Even though this laptop is on the lower line of MSI laptops, you still get many cool features like Matrix Display, Audio Boost, Supercharger, Cooler Boost, and Sound Blaster Cinema, for example. This laptop runs Microsoft Windows 8.1, and the retail price is $899 US. Let's kick off this review by talking about the design and build quality of the GP72 PE Leopard. To keep the price tag down, MSI chose a plastic design all around the laptop instead of the unusual aluminum finish that is found on many MSI laptops. One of the benefits of an all plastic design is the weight. This laptop weighs 6.4 pounds and measures 1.6 inches thick, which is fairly light for a 17 inch gaming laptop. Yes, the design and build quality does feel cheap compared to most MSI laptops, however, with a price range of under $900 US, that was kind of expected. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here's the Kensington security slot, AC charging port, exhaust port for your fans, full-size HDMI output, two USB 3.0 ports, microphone input, your headset input, and an SD card reader. Next up, let's take a look at the right side of the laptop. Here goes your killer E2200 gigabit ethernet port, which should improve your online gaming experience, your VGA port, USB 2.0 port, your DVD drive, and your second USB 2.0 port. On the top of the keyboard, there's a row of buttons exclusive to the MSI line of laptops. Let me go ahead and break them down for you. The first button we have here is our eject button, display on and off button, airplane mode, cooler boost, which enables the fans to run at full speed for cooler temperatures, Wi-Fi on and off button, your G panel button. The G panel button launches an application where you can monitor the system's performance. Let me go and show you right here. Here you can take a look at the overall system performance like the CPU and the GPU temperatures for example. This laptop features a 17.3 inch LCD display. Let's go and test out the viewing angles on this model. Let's go and rotate the laptop to the left. So far it's starting to blur out a little bit. Overall, the viewing angles on this laptop was adequate, considering it's not an IPS display. Let's go and rotate back to the center, and we'll test out the display by pushing it all the way back. And that's 100% right there. This section, we're going to talk about the display quality. This laptop features a 17.3 inch LCD display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080p. It also features an anti-glare coating, which will help reduce glare. The color accuracy on this laptop has been very good. Take a look at some of these sample images I'm scrolling through here. Text looks sharp. Overall, I've been highly satisfied with the display panel on this laptop considering its price range. And to back that up, let's go and take a look at the results on the Spider 4 Pro Colorimeter. For Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 96%, which is a very high score. This is a very high score that is usually found on high-end ultrabooks like the Samsung Ative Book 9. And for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 75%. With these kind of scores, you can expect very good color reproduction and overall display quality on your panel. And the brightness levels were also good. During my tests, I usually kept the brightness around 75%. Let's jump to the trackpad section. This laptop features an Elon trackpad that is sometimes too sensitive for my taste. Take a look at that. It just activated the camera, which I did not want to. Multi-touch gestures were fairly smooth. However, two-finger scrolling sometimes gave me a couple of issues. Let me show you an example here. As you can see here, the two-finger scrolling is not responsive when I'm scrolling up and down. It takes a couple of hard swipes to bring it all the way down. Overall, I would rate the performance of this trackpad as fair. MSI made the right decision by choosing a button trackpad instead of the usual click pad. The textured finish can take some time getting used to. However, look at all this wasted space around the corners and around the top and the bottom. I just wish MSI would have utilized this space and made the trackpad bigger. This is kind of a small trackpad for a 17-inch laptop. And on the top left, you got your trackpad on and off button. 
This laptop features a standard full-size keyboard with a 10-key numeric keypad, and the keyboard is made by SteelSeries. This keyboard has good key travel, however, for tactile feedback, it just didn't feel premium like the other MSI laptops that I'm used to. Let me show you a demo of the key travel in action. Like I said, the key travel is good on this keyboard. My biggest complaint on this keyboard is there's no backlit keys. Come on MSI, for $900 please give me a backlit keyboard. For this section we're going to talk about speaker performance. This laptop features two top facing speakers on top of the keyboard. Overall the Sound Blaster Cinema did a good job of pushing these speakers. However, for a 17 inch laptop, I just wish there was a little bit more kick from the lower end. Next up, let's talk about processor performance. This laptop features an Intel Core i5-4210H which is clocked at 2.9GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.5GHz for one active core and 3.4GHz for two active cores. This is not your typical dual core i5 processor. The i5-4210H is a fast dual core processor with a thermal design output power of 47 watts, which is right up there with the quad core i7 processors. The Intel Core i5-4210H provided just enough juice for the Nvidia 840M to play many of today's games like Battlefield 4 and Titanfall on low to medium settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at some Geekbench 3 performance scores for the dual core i5. For the single core score I got 3155 and for the multi core score I got 6631. For Cinebench R15 I got a CPU score of 332 CB. Let's dive into the main attraction of the show, which is the NVIDIA 840M, which features 2GB of DDR3 memory and is based on the Maxwell architecture for improved power and efficiency. The 840M is about 30% faster than last year's 740M, while almost matching the performance of last year's 750M DDR3 version. So how was the performance of the NVIDIA 840M? During my test with Battlefield 4, I was able to get around 35 to 45 frames per second on medium settings at 1920 by 1080p. And for Bioshock Infinite, I was able to get around 35 to 40 frames per second on high settings at 1080p. But once you crank up the settings on high or ultra on Battlefield 4, you quickly realize the limitation of the NVIDIA 840M. Next up is our benchmarks for the 840M. For the Cinebench R15, I got an OpenGL score of 60.12 frames per second. Now we're going to take a look at 3D Mark Advanced Edition. For the Firestrike, I got a score of 1459, followed by Skydiver, which got a score of 5579 and Cloudgate, which got a score of 6,678. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play many of today's games on low to medium settings at a resolution of 1366 by 768. However, if you tweak your settings, you can expect to play Battlefield 4 on medium settings at 1080p. Okay, enough of the benchmarks, let's go and test out the 840M on Battlefield 4 on medium settings at 1920 by 1080p. Alright, let's get started. So right now we're about 40 to 43 frames per second. So far the game is running pretty smooth. Alright, get down. You don't want none of this. Right now we're about 39 frames per second. And now we just dropped to 35 frames per second. Alright, let's push this 840M on high settings at 1080p and let's take a look at the results. Alright, here we go. As you can see here, the frames has dropped to around 28 frames per second. The lowest we got was around 26. Let's increase some action here. They're holding about 28 to 29 frames per second. As you dip below 30, the game does feel a little bit choppy, especially on Battlefield 4. Boy, you want some of this? Get down. Woo! And we just dipped to around 23 frames per second. I think I see somebody up here. Yeah, he's climbing up. Where do you think you're going? Get down. The next game we're going to test is Bioshock Infinite. This game is going to run at 1920 by 1080p on high settings. Alright, let's test this baby out. So far we're about 38 frames per second. Uh oh, we just topped out at 41. So far we're dipping out to 29 now. So far still running pretty smooth for a game like Bioshock Infinite. Get away from me. Right, let's see what's over here. Ooh. All right, let's increase some action. So far, we're averaging around 28 to 35 frames per second. As you can see here, for the casual gamer, the 840M will do just fine for light to medium duty gaming. This laptop features a 1 terabyte Toshiba hard drive running at 5400 RPM. For this benchmark, we're going to use Crystal Dismark. For the sequential read speed, I got 102 megabytes a second. And for the sequential write speed, I got 86.10 megabytes a second. 
The overall system performance with this hard drive felt sluggish. I would recommend upgrading to an MSATA SSD for better performance. And here's a screenshot of the available space on the hard drive. This hard drive has two partitions. The first one has 581GB and the second partition has 334GB. What about fan noise? Fan noise was adequate for the most part, however, during an extended gameplay, you could definitely hear the fan running. Is the sound loud and disturbing? No, it's just a little bit loud compared to most 17-inch gaming laptops because the vents are on the left side of the laptop. After about an hour of Battlefield 4, the maximum CPU temperature was around 91 degrees Celsius. And for the maximum GPU temperature I got was around 72 degrees Celsius. You can thank the all-new Maxwell architecture for these efficient temperatures. Even the temperatures around the keyboard and the palm rest were good, nothing to be concerned of. MSI has made it easy to upgrade your components in this laptop, simply remove these bottom screws and you'll have access to the hard drive, two DIMM slots for your RAM, as only one DIMM slot is being occupied by the 8GB of memory. Thankfully MSI has included an MSATA port, where you can use the MSATA port as your main drive for better performance. And underneath that MSATA port is your Intel Dual Band Wireless AC3160 with Bluetooth 4.0. During my online gaming with Battlefield 4, I did not experience any hiccups. Overall, great performance from the Wi-Fi chip. Let's dive into battery performance. This laptop features a 49 watt hour battery pack, which is small for a 17 inch laptop. During my test, I was able to get around 3 to 3.5 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness at around 75%. And that was just with regular usage. With gaming, you can expect anywhere from 1 to 1 hour and 30 minutes. The good news here is there's an external battery pack where you can just add another one to keep on playing. If you're the casual gamer that wants to play many of today's games on low to medium settings without breaking the bank, then I would recommend this GP70 2PE Leopard. With that being said, the NVIDIA 840M can be quickly pushed to its limits based on its 64-bit memory interface and DDR3 memory. For $200 more, I would recommend the MSI GE70 which features the NVIDIA 860M with 2GB of GDDR5 memory and you get that beautiful aluminum finish as well as that backlit keyboard. Alright, this completes my full review on the all new MSI GP70 2PE Leopard. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe to be notified of the latest videos just like this one. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.